Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we are covering something very special indeed. Yes, yesterday we covered all of the emergent factions in RTR Imperium Surrectum version 0.6.4 apart from one. But if you haven't seen that video, guys, go and check that out. You can see now that emergent factions can be selected from the main menu screen. And we also went through how all of those factions can be spawned in game as well. But today we have a very special one, the final emergent faction of course the egyptians so let's get into it this faction is actually based on the great egyptian revolt of 205 to 186 bc which was a native egyptian revolt against the rule of the ptolemies but to understand its consequences and causes, we do have to go back a little further with the invasion of Alexander in 333 BC. With his invasion, a Greek regime was established in Egypt with its hub at Alexandria. And ever since then, up until the revolt, the native Egyptians had been ruled by Greek Macedonians. And although the Ptolemaic kings were officially recognized as pharaohs and even crowned by the high priest of Memphis, and they gave a significant portion of their wealth to the official religious cults of the native Egyptians, even though all of this was true, they were fundamentally still a foreign dynasty ruling over a land populated by, in the most part, people that saw them as foreign. Unfortunately, we don't have a huge amount written about the Ptolemies of Egypt. Now, this is maybe in part to the Romans doing something to the Library of Alexandria, but I guess we'll never know. Um, but basically, in terms of recorded history, we do have revolts starting in about 246 BC with a number of native revolts against the Greek rule of the Ptolemies. But in order to understand the context of the Egyptian revolt, the Great Egyptian Revolt of 205 BC, we have to go about 20 odd years on from 246. And we have to understand the context of what this was taking place in. Now, the Ptolemies themselves, of course, were one of the successor states of Alexander. And the wars of the successors had raged for many, many years. Although we are a long way from the initial wars of the successors, the Ptolemies and the Seleucid Empire had been fighting for a very, very, very long time. I mean, the wars even just in Syria, this is just in Syria, there are wars in the 270s, there were wars in the 260s, there were wars in the 240s, and there were wars in the 210s. So think about the strain that does to the manpower of a region, to the coffers of a region too. And of course, the Seleucids were um, no much better off really in terms of this, but the Ptolemies really did feel that strain. And of course, each of Alexander's successors believed that they truly were Alexander's successor. No one said, oh, the Seleucids, they're actually Alexander's successors. No, the Antigonids are. No, the Ptolemies are. They all believed that they were. So these wars were incredibly important in keeping the prestige of the nation high and asserting that claim to Alexander's legacy. Because honestly, without that claim to Alexander's legacy, no matter how far away he died in time you really don't have that much of a mandate to rule this is a foreign dynasty that placed itself on the throne of egypt basically with the backing of a dead alexander's blessing so without that claim to his legacy your rule is incredibly tenuous and doesn't really have a thread to stand on but in the context of the Great Egyptian Revolt, guys, we've got to go back to 217 BC in one of the Syrian wars uh, that raged from 219 to 217 BC. And we've got to go specifically to the Battle of Raphia, one of the largest Hellenistic engagements in the whole time period, with around 75,000 troops fighting on the side of Ptolemy, and 68,000 troops fighting on the side of Antiochus III the Great, Antiochus III Sota, 
Now you might think, why does this battle 12 years prior to the start of the Great Egyptian Revolt have anything to do with the starting of the Great Egyptian Revolt? Where there are two very, very important strands here to consider. When the Ptolemies take Egypt, there is a small minority Macedonian population. And over time, with the successive wars against the Seleucids, this population is slowly whittled down, becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. And that means less fighting men to fight in the armies as phalangites. Now, these phalangites were the best weapons that these Hellenistic kingdoms had at their disposal in a lot of cases. And it's pretty obvious why. Man without long spear runs into wall of men with long spears. Man without long spear gets skewered. It's pretty simple, really. But by this point, the Ptolemies had really depleted their reserves of Macedonian fighting men or men of fighting age. And they needed new phalangites if they were going to beat the Seleucids. Now, this came in the form of native Egyptians that they then trained in the way of being a phalangite. Well, why am I going on about phalangites when we're talking about the Great Egyptian Revolt? Well, a significant number of Egyptian phalangites were drafted into the army and trained in the way of the phalangite. And after the Battle of Raphia, after Ptolemy's success, they were all returned home. And now you had a war-hardened veteran force, maybe veteran's a bit of a strong word, but you had a war-hardened, trained and disciplined force that was in the land, toiling in the fields, that were being taxed by a foreign dynasty. And that leads us nicely on to the second point. The second point being that during these wars, of course, the Ptolemies had to levy great taxes on the people of Egypt for the wars. Now, this was not really a war that they were invested in. They had no links, per se, to Alexander. So many of them would feel, in my opinion, that they were being taxed for a war that they never signed off on, for a land that they had no chance of ever going to, for a land that they probably never even heard of when they're toiling along the Nile. Combine with this with the fact that stories about Ptolemy IV's life were that he lived a pretty extravagant and outrageous life with an outrageous lifestyle, and you don't have a happy population. So that's why we have the Great Revolt, which started a little bit earlier, maybe in Edfu at the beginning of the revolt, 207, 206. But the official start of the revolt was 205, when Haronophris was crowned the pharaoh in Thebes, the pharaoh of the Egyptian people, not the pharaoh of Egypt, the pharaoh of the Egyptian people, which is a very subtle difference, my friend, because the Ptolemies claim to be the pharaohs of Egypt, but this was a pharaoh for the Egyptian people, which caused massive support of this rebellion. And this led to many, many settlements in the Upper Nile revolting against Greek rule and against the Ptolemies, as well as some in the Lower Nile as well. This revolt would go on from 205 to 186 BC, nearly 20 years, in, and is one of the earliest documented forms of guerrilla warfare or a guerrilla war that we ever see in the histories, although the word for guerrilla warfare and guerrilla war would come a lot later, nearly 2,000 years later in the Peninsula War fought by the Spaniards against the French. It is testament to the upswell of feeling from the native Egyptians that even after Haranophris died in the counter-offensive of 200 and 199 BC by the Ptolemies, that they still carried on the revolt, crowning Chionophris as the new pharaoh in Thebes. And although there is scarce records of this time period, it's very likely that Thebes only really came under proper Ptolemaic control once again in 191 BC. 
C. And finally, Chernofris was defeated by Komanos, a Ptolemaic general in 186 BC, which then led to the death of the rebellion. This rebellion, just by the fact that it lasted so long, must have been very brutal and very significant to the Ptolemies. In the sources, there are no tax receipts for places in the south between 205 and 186 BC, whether Greek or Egyptian, showing that this was very likely very much a guerrilla warfare where maybe the Egyptians couldn't establish as much control over cities as they wanted or secure them long enough to even build up a tax administration and it certainly shows that the Ptolemies weren't collecting taxes in those regions for very long as well. So overall a very interesting part of history and must have really crippled the Ptolemies for quite some time although they would remain in control of Egypt until 30 BC when of course the Romans came a knocking. So enough about the history guys, let's actually have a look at the faction. You actually start with a significant amount of territory, even though it is relatively spread out, but it's got these hubs of activity that you can expand out from, burst from, if you want to. You have 12 settlements to start with, a decent chunk of them, seven of them are down south, although Elephantine over here is slightly split from the rest, I believe by only one or two provinces. And then you also have a significant portion, five settlements on the Nile Delta, which if you can take Alexandria and Memphis, you can probably cripple the Ptolemies in this region for good, which would be a very good tactic in my opinion when you want to do this yourself. I really think this is such a cool faction and really, really interesting to see if you can reconquer these lands for the native Egyptian people. As you can see, the Nile does stretch a long way with a lot of settlements down in the south below the Egyptians if you spawn in as them. But honestly, there's not going to be any armies around here to really do anything for against you if you've got a decent sized army. And you start with a good chunk of, uh, a chunk of troops. So you could probably clean up the south and go north at the same time up and down the Nile, which is so cool. And then in the Delta, as you can see, Alexandria is not far away. You can really fort wall this area off if you want to stop the Ptolemies coming across certain bridges, etc. So a really, really interesting faction and very, very fun, I believe, for you guys to play if you want to do so. So like I said yesterday guys, there's a few options if you want to play them. You can jump into them directly from the main menu. When they pop out, they also give you an option of whether you want to play them. So you could play Ptolemies and then play them too. If that option doesn't come up, you can just use Control Egyptians in the console too, if that option no longer is available. So don't quote me on that, but you can play them directly from the main screen. But what are the things to look out for as the Ptolemies and how do these guys spawn on the map when you are playing as someone else, most notably, obviously, the one that's going to be affected the most as the Ptolemies. So how does this faction spawn when you are playing as the Ptolemies? Well, it's very simple indeed. There is a 5% chance per turn, flat 5% chance per turn for the Egyptians to spawn if the first Ptolemaic reform has been activated. So, what is the first Ptolemaic reform? Let's have a look. They have four reforms, but we're talking about the first ones, which the first one is that the Ptolemaic reforms one requirements own a large city with Egyptian native religion or culture, shall we say? So if we have a look on the map here, you can see the amount of cities that are Egyptian. It's pretty much nearly all of them, apart from Alexandria, now Kratis, and a couple of others smattered in there um, throughout. But yeah, mostly Egyptian. So if any of these become a large city, guys, a large city, you are going to have a 5% chance per turn for the Egyptian revolt to spawn. 
But ultimately, you do want them to spawn, my friends, because if you don't, Ptolemaic Reforms 2 is not going to happen, which is to defeat the Egyptian Revolt. And honestly, as a player playing against the Egyp Egyptian Revolt, it's going to be a really fun addition to the game. It might seem like it's going to be difficult to defeat, but because they're so spread out and there's so few cities, I think you're going to be pretty much okay. However... Playing as the Egyptian Revolt, I think, is going to be a really fun challenge, too. So, basically, um, if you want to avoid it, you've just got not got to upgrade any of your Egyptian cities to large city. But, like I say, embrace it. Build an army in Alexandria. Leave it there once you've got a city to large city. And then go and take them out straight away if you want to play as the Ptolemies. Otherwise, there is no way to avoid it. And, like I say, I don't think gameplay-wise... Because you can get your, you know, some better units, some better Egyptian units, if you take uh, the revolt and kill the revolt. So, I think it's better to, of course, um, kill the revolt as well. But we're going to see if we can spawn it now as well, guys. So, let's see. So, I've used the console to make Memphis into a large city. So, let's press the end turn. Let's get those, uh, let's get those reforms and let's see, can we spawn the Egyptian revolt? Well, there we go with the first Ptolemaic reforms, guys. So we're going to spam that end turn until we get it. It'd be amazing if we could get it on the first turn. I doubt it, though. One in 20 chance, guys. Wish me luck. So here we have it. It took a few turns, guys. It took a few turns, maybe eight turns or so. But like I say, it's a one in 20 chance. You get this lovely message with the historical background on there as well. And you can choose whether you want to play as them or not I'm going to accept and let's see oh there we go boys there we go we have spawned out as the glorious egyptian revolt and there we go we have spawned as the egyptian revolt really cool indeed like i say a fantastically cool event and something i think would be a really cool campaign for you guys would be to play as the ptolemies get to the egyptian revolt tick the button play as these guys and just um save it here then continue playing your campaign as the ptolemies and then when you've you know had your fun with the ptolemies taken out the Seleucids or whatever come back load up that egyptian revolt save and see whether you can defeat the empire that you have created i personally think that that would be very very fun indeed very cool indeed but we have done a full roster video on the egyptians before guys so check that out if you haven't seen it but we'll go through the roster you get some ptolemaic matroi foroi which is of course your egyptian standard sword and board unit you also get matrimoi phalangites or matrimi phalangites should i say in ancient greek which isn't a great phalangite unit it, it is pretty much a deuteroi even even worse than a deuteroi you also get the matrimi swordsman over here yeah, they are a sword and board unit as well with a bit more armor and defense than the Ptolemaic Matroi Foroi. You also get Epilectoi Phalangites, which are a much better Phalangite unit for you, which is really cool to see. I love the designs on all of these guys as well. If you, if you look at them, you can tell they are ethnically different from the Greeks when you look at the faces of the guys in there too which is really really nice you also get some matrimoy cavalry some matrimoy foroi cavalry which are quite an effective light cavalry unit as well you also get of course egyptian general's bodyguard and kassai cataphracts guys you get cataphracts as the egyptians which are a fantastic unit look at that 43 charge 32 defense for a cavalry is insane 17 morale and 14 melee attack is also very good. These guys are going to be brutal when you get on the campaign map. And then you get some standard just archers and slingers and sort of acontistai type unit as well. Well, I think that covers everything for the Egyptian Revolt, guys. I think this is going to be a fantastic, fantastic emergent faction to play as if you want to. I think it's going to be really, really fun indeed. And I hope you did enjoy, guys. If you did enjoy, a like and a subscribe would be massively, massively appreciated as usual. And a big thank you to David once again as the channel member. If you do want to join the membership program now, guys, there is a tier as low as 
one dollar one pound one euro whatever your native currency is so if you want to join on that basis that is the low tier for you of course please don't support the channel with money if you cannot afford it but if you can guys and you do want to the option is there so thank you very much for watching it's been a pleasure as always and i will see you all again on the next video